NATO's new strategic concept is not just about how the organization sees new challenges and develops partnerships. It would also play a central role in determining how NATO's military forces adapt. I think the, the military input is extremely important. Uh, as an example, suppose we would make, so yeah, first the expert group, they advise into the new strategy, then up to the secretary general and the countries, they draft a new secretary, and suppose that then the military would say, this is a fine strategy, but we cannot execute it. That's useless. It seems to no longer make sense for nations to want to maintain their own end-to-end -end military solution uh, and instead to begin to focus on specialization and niche capabilities. And if that's the path we're going down, and I think that's probably uh, an appropriate path to go down, then we need to make use of things like the NATO Response Force and, and to begin leveraging our investments to allow those specialized units to snap together. And costs and collective responses already seem high on the agenda. One of the more important concepts is the affordability of military forces. Uh, how do you afford the military you have today or the military that uh, integrates into NATO that can, can be used to, in a cooperative way? Um, uh, in the past, uh, uh, countries have relied on companies um, uh, to produce capabilities uh, without an understanding of uh, what would be total ownership costs. It's when um, countries, uh, even the United States, try to do uh, everything uh, that, that you run into an affordability crisis. Making the necessary changes, especially during a financial crisis, will require the public and private sectors to work closely together. I believe that uh, it's a kind of an all-hands effort. Uh, when you get right down to it, uh, uh, defense uh, takes military, governments, and commercial resources. And if defense job cuts are necessary, it does not need to mean that the forces are any less ready. What you can do is, is rationalize the workforce, i.e. the jobs that are necessary uh, to produce that readiness and that future, and no more. It's when you try to do all things and, and use it in the name of just jobs uh, that there becomes a disconnect. In today's fast-changing security environment, the military needs constant modernizing. I would think that uh, um, when you look at modernizing a, a force, uh, you're looking, I would start first with command and control and, uh, and uh, intelligence surveillance and, and reconnaissance. In the long term, the health of the alliance, those commitments to stable modernization defense investment programs, that's where your capabilities come from. If you're not modernizing and pursuing capabilities, um, in the long run, you're, you're going to see a significant a significant penalty for that, and the catch-up costs, as nations have found, could, can be quite substantial. And ultimately, this is about making sure that the military is not actually used. When you look at warfare as a whole, um, uh, you know, what, what you tr would intend to do is, is never have a force that, want, that would have to fight. You always want a force that, you know, you know, has the information they need to be able to avoid the fight. One of the reasons why we need to do more within this alliance is that everyone can invest a little so that the collective effort is more. At a time of financial stringency, at a time when defense budgets go down, we should do more in NATO, not less. That is the fundamental purpose of why we have an alliance in the first place.